Hi TNS, welcome back to my channel guys. Today we are talking all things French ombre and I am so excited about this video because I feel like a lot of technicians can get quite intimidated by this technique which is not necessary at all because it can be a quite easy and simple technique once you know what exactly to look for. And remember, anything that you are learning does not come from perfection, it comes from repetition. So the more you practice, the better you'll get. So we all know that French ombre is very, very popular among brides. However, there are other reasons why we would recommend this overlay to our clients. One of the biggest reasons, among other things, probably being the fact that it shows very little to no regrowth. Now this is amazing for clients who are going on holiday and they want their nails to, for that month or two to stay beautiful throughout their entire trip. Or if you have a client, I have a few of these, who hates seeing regrowth. That is going to take your client from wearing her overlay for only two weeks to maybe even four weeks. Maybe four weeks is pushing it. Three to four weeks. <laughs> So just in that sense, giving your clients an option of here is a, an overlay that's going to look natural, look beautiful, look elegant, but last you just as long as any other overlay would. In today's video and in any other video I ever do, I am strictly using Biosculpture products. So for French Ombre, you are going to need the appropriate treatment gels, white high pigmented gel, pink paste, two ombre sponges, a sapphire tool, and vitamin dose. With any French ombre you do, it's going to be very important that your base coat is absolutely perfect. Not buff to perfection, not dry gel shaped to perfection, but a wet gel shaped to perfection. So for this video, I'm going to use a two-in-one base coat, starting off with a grip layer of Evo Flex and then a flat application of BioBase. So my flex, I'm going to start off with hard brush pressure and very little gel. Offload in the center, move towards your cuticles and cover your side walls. Seal at the front and with still hard brush pressure, you are going to do long, hard overlapping strokes. Now your flex is going to act as a primer just to get that proper bonding. And then we're going to go in with a flat application of BioBase to add strength to the natural nail. So again, starting off with a grip layer or float in the center, hard brush pressure, very little gel. Move towards your cuticles and cover your side walls. Seal at the front, but because we're doing a flat application, I'm going to pick up more gel. And now with soft brush pressure, I'm going to offload in the center and do long, smooth, soft overlapping strokes. And like I said, for any ombre, we need a perfect base coat. And like gel does, it gathers. It loves to gather. It loves to create bumps on our gel or on our nail. So what you're going to do with your upper arch brush is you're going to wet gel shape this base coat to perfection. Make sure that your side walls are covered and that you flatten out and even out that entire base coat. Once your base coat has cured, you can now wipe with cleanser and a lint-free wipe. You don't want any fluff on this nail. Then you're going to go in and start your French ombre. Now what is really important to remember here is very little product and very soft pressure when puffing. 
Imagine Tinkerbell dancing on the nail. It's Tinkerbell pressure, very soft, very gentle pressure in order to get that even distribution of color. Don't worry about building solid color intensity from the get-go. Start off with less and build your way up to that solid white. Any French ombre should fade from white to pink to nothing. That is your clear French ombre. A general rule I have when I do ombre is that I cover her entire free edge and a little bit. So the entire zone one and a bit of zone two. I'm going to cover that and then start fading it into the pink, into nothing. So on the second layer, once you've cured your ombre for 60 seconds, you can go in with your upper arch brush and white HP gel just a little bit and paint on your side walls. Once that's painted on, you can go in with your puffer and blend it out to the rest of the ombre. Once your ombre is done, your application is perfect, your client is happy, you can go in with soft gel as your strengthening layer. Every ombre needs a strengthening layer. It is absolutely crucial in order to prevent any chipping. Remember your French ombre is a very, very thin application. So there is no way that that is adding any strength or weight to the natural nail. So it's very easy for an ombre to chip. So to prevent that, we're going to add a strengthening layer, but with very soft brush pressure. And then you can end off with a flat application of gloss. So remember at the beginning of the video when I told you that a French ombre is actually an easy technique, you just need to know what to look out for. So let's have a look at some of the things that could potentially go wrong when doing your French ombre. Starting off with the base coat, if your base coat is applied too thin, you stand the risk of wiping away a lot of product, mainly along your side walls and cuticle area. This is going to cause a lot of unevenness and patchiness in your French ombre. The same goes to applying a base coat too thick. Remember, an ombre shows every single mistake. So again, you're going to sit with an ombre that is very patchy, the color intensity is not even, it's not smooth, and you're really going to struggle to get that perfect fade. But now the logical solution would be to buff this thick base coat, to smoothen it out. But we can't do an ombre on a buffed surface. 
why like i said it shows every single mistake so every pore that was created by this file when dry gel shaping is now going to show when doing your ombre you also can't puff onto a sticky base coat because the gel is going to start clumping together again not creating that smooth effect you want from an ombre let's talk about what could go wrong while you're actually doing your ombre now the most common mistake i see among technicians is the use of way too much product like i said at the beginning when doing a french ombre you need very little gel at a time and build up your color intensity don't try and get that color intensity on the very first layer whether you need two layers or three layers just take your time with it slowly build up the intensity your client wants when you use too much product it takes away from that natural look you are trying to create another mistake is not having a clean sponge if you start puffing dust or fluff onto your ombre go in with some sellotape and just remove any dust or excess gel i usually like to do this after my ombre as well just to remove any excess gel that might be on my sponge so that i don't end up with a sponge that is clogged with hp gel and then i also mentioned that i want you to treat an ombre like an overlay that never fully cures and that you really need to communicate to your client tell her that as soon as that ombre is done on her nails she cannot touch anything she can't touch her hair she can't pick up her phone she can't scratch her nose whatever the case might be she can't do anything until that ombre has been sealed in because it's also a very thin application if your client bumps her nail against a light that gel can actually just scrape off that's how easy it is to mess up a french ombre it is not possible to fix that french ombre once it has been smudged if there is a massive scratch down the center of your ombre you need to wipe it off and start again and then lastly like i said tinkerbell pressure as soon as you start adding too much pressure or hammering on one spot on the nail you are going to start taking product away so instead of offloading product onto the nail you are now picking up product and absorbing it into the sponge leaving you with a very uneven french ombre again treat your ombre like an overlay that never fully cures when you add your strengthening layer with soft gel you want to use very soft brush pressure no hard brush pressure on top of an ombre reason being it could potentially smudge your design But now I also don't want you guys to be so terrified of smudging the ombre that you add too much gel over your ombre because this could potentially end up looking very thick, bumpy and not very, it doesn't have a nice look overall. And trying to dry gel shape that is extremely risky because once you file through an ombre, you have to soak off and redo everything adding a strengthening layer is extremely important especially when it comes to a clear french ombre because it prevents chipping this was only after a day of not having a strengthening layer over my ombre and then lastly when adding your strengthening layer and adding your gloss gel focus on covering your side walls I see so many girls do beautiful ombres and then they forget to do the side walls and once they wipe, they wipe their side walls away. And then just to end off, I have a little bonus for you guys. An ombre on just 
an overlay so if your client doesn't want to see her natural nail you can just add an overlay color and then ombre on top of that there's not much to explain to it it's more or less the same the only thing that changes is you don't need a strengthening layer because now you have the strength and the thickness from the two color layers but other than that same same
that is all from me guys thank you so much for watching if you like this video and would like to see more videos like this one give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below and do not forget to subscribe i'll see you next time